when you talk about competitive automobile racing, the proof is in the pudding. And here at the Ontario Motor Speedway in California, it all comes down to this. In the $5 million NASCAR Grand National Series, after 30 races, two drivers have amassed over 4,500 points, and yet they are but two points apart to decide the national champion. The six-time national champion, Richard Petty, and the challenger from Franklin, Tennessee, Darrell Waltrip. It's only moments before the start. I saw you two guys in church together just a few moments ago. Have any special thoughts about this race? Daryl? No. <laughs> Richard? Well, you know, uh, it's just another race uh, that uh, the way it looks like the season's just come down to one race shootout, and uh, you know, it's like playing a World Series or something. They play six games. They just got to play the, the last game, and that's what we are here today. Uh, and it's, uh, I don't think it's really going to come down to, to Daryl out driving me or me out driving him. It's just going to come down to just whoever's got the best luck on this particular day. Waltrip, that's the shortest answer you've ever given me. What is this national title going to mean to you if you can pull it off? Well, we've had a great year, Ken. We've uh, won more races than anybody else, and we're, we're the leading money winners. And uh, it's going to be disappointing to me and the entire Gatorade team if we can't win this uh, championship. We know that there's a, there's a possibility we won't, and we've accepted that, but uh, there's a lot of emotion in our pit today, and we just hope we can hold all together. Well, we're about to see it. Has it been close? I'll show you how close it was. Remember this? Daytona Beach, Florida, this past February. Waltrip and Petty are back markers to these two, leading the event in the last lap, coming to the last turn. Cale Yarborough and Donnie Allison slamming together at 190 miles per hour and into the wall creating this incredible finish. Flashing out of turn number four, Richard Petty has the lead. Darrell Waltrip is in second. A.J. Foyt trailing there in third. Down to the line they come. This is how close it was in February. This is as close as it is right now. Richard Petty across the line first. Darrell Waltrip right on his rear bumper. Remember, going into this race, Waltrip has the advantage by just two points. Now let's go to the pits and Brock. Ken, behind me, ground zero. The Petty and Waltrip pits side by side. And believe me, the championship will be decided here as much as it will be on the racetrack. Okay. Now up to you. As everyone moves to their positions, the field comes out of turn number four. Working with us again today, David Hobbs, your reaction to this confrontation? Well, NASCAR racing is incredibly close, and there's two points separating these two drivers, Walter and Petty, with a total combine of 9,300 points. And like all NASCAR races, this is going to go right down to the wire. As they start, let's take a look at the grid. Cale Yarborough is on the pole, number 11, first time he has been there this year. Blanking him, number 27 from Elmy, North Carolina and Detroit, Michigan, Denny Parsons. Starting third on the grid, car number 15, Bobby Allison from Hueytown, Alabama, with five wins to his credit this year, $350,000. Next to him, Buddy Baker, car number 28. Starting the fifth position, Richard Petty, winner of 190 races, going for the title, blanking him, going for Rookie of the Year, number two, Dale Earnhardt. Seventh on the grid, Neil Bonnet, and also from Hueytown, Alabama. And next to him is Ricky Rudd, last year's Rookie of the Year. We'll be back to the fifth row. Starting ninth on the grid is Donnie Allison, number one, the Haas Ellington car, and in tenth, the current leader of the national standings, Darrell Waltrip. Chip Warren reaches for the flags as we take a look at the rest of the starting field here for Los Angeles Times. Charities, 500. About 50,000 on hand to see it. Two and a half mile track field coming down for the start. And watch this land rush into turn number one. A good start and on the break, Cale Yarborough launches himself off the pole into the lead, David. Yeah, this is the first time Cale's been on the pole this year, and he's making good advantage, pulling away from Benny Parsons through turn one, down the short chute, into turn two. Buddy Baker now running in third, Richard Petty on the inside, coming to fourth. He's knocked down one position. In front, out of the second turn, going to 190 miles per hour for the first time this afternoon. Cale Yarborough in the lead. Here's Benny Parsons on the inside. Parsons going for first place. Baker drawing down the inside in the slingshot, going to second. Benny Parsons takes the lead in turn three there, holding a nice line, drifting up to the wall. Buddy Baker following him, Cale Yarbrough behind, having a go at Buddy Baker there. Out of turn four, Benny Parsons in the David If prepared MC Anderson automobile with a two-car length advantage, but in the draft, they tighten up, and look at that choo-choo train for the lead. Hey, those 
these guys about five down the line are being really sucked along today. Here's Baker to the inside. Buddy Baker is taking the lead at turn one. And Cale Yarborough draws to the inside as well. Richard Petty's right up there with that group. Richard Petty going for his seventh national title and obviously going for the race win as well. Here's Baker just drawing away by seven, eight, nine car lengths. Parsons is back into second place. Yarborough falling to third. Buddy Baker has shown an extraordinary turn of speed this year. He's had seven pole positions and three wins, and he really can go fast on these fast tracks, and he looks like it today, too. Really low into turn three. Look at that wheel over the white line, but what a bunch right behind him. Here they come for turn number four. Always a little dodgy here at the Ontario Motor Speedway. And at the line, Baker has it. Kaylee Opero in second. It's still Benny Parsons third, Richard Petty in fourth. Darrell Waltrip is back there in eighth position. Again, in the tightest contest for the national championship in history, Waltrip is leading Petty by just two points going into this race. Well, Baker's lead has evaporated, David. They're all on him. Yep, there's no way to get away in these stock car races with the draft or the slipstream situation like it is. It's very difficult to make a break. They just come right back at you all the time. Cale Yarborough, who was on the pole and thereby qualifying for that Bush Clash, which will be seen on CBS in February, live from Daytona. Here he is down the inside. He's going for the lead. Yarborough at turn three. Side by side into the turn, but Buddy Baker has the high line, the best bit of road. Baker back in front, pushing and back here in ninth position. There is car number 90, Ricky Rudd, and in 10th was Darrell Waltrip. Leaders coming around to complete another lap. Here comes Parsons down to the inside for second. Two wide. Richard Petty's going to the inside. He's going to make it three wide for second place. Petty, here comes Bobby Allison down, almost four wide. Three wide into turn number one. Petty goes into second place. We asked Richard Petty how he liked this Ontario track. Yeah, it's not been too good for me to finish out of season because uh, we've not really ever run that good here. We, we always run good. We always lead the race and everything, but we always have a little bit of problem. Uh, I think I've run a second, a third, maybe a fourth, but uh, it's not one of our better race tracks as far as finishing. And you must remember that Richard had his problems and the sort of things that lots of people are paying for. Although there's been talk all week, David, about the fact that they were going to race it today, both he and Waltrip. Most people thought they would detune just a little, but that's not the case. It's currently Richard Petty running in second position. Darrell Waltrip back in 10th, and there are 14 cars in the lead draft as they come off turn number four to complete another lap. And here's Petty going for the lead. On the high side, Richard Petty is going out in front in car number 43. Number 28, Buddy Baker falling to second place. Well, one thing that does for the championship, that gives Richard Petty five points now, which puts him three ahead of Darrell Waltrip. Five points if you lead the race. An additional five points for the driver who leads the most laps, 175 points for a win, 170 for second, and so on back to the field. Here's number 28, Baker, going back after Petty on the point. And Baker is going to retake the lead. Oh, we have a crash in turn number one. Rezik and D.K. Ulrich, that's Ulrich on the outside of the track in the wall. John Rezik is spun to the inside, bringing out the caution flag. And the leaders, here's Richard Petty pitting. The leaders are all coming in, and it's going to put Darrell Waltrip in the lead. Thereby giving him his five points back, so he retakes the lead of the championship with those two points he went in with. Under caution, Darrell Waltrip is out in front here in the Los Angeles Times Charities 500. We'll be back with more in a moment. the LA Times 500, Allison first, Parsons second, Baker third, and with all the leaders having pitted, including Darrell Waltrip, he is now back in ninth position. Field in turn one, there you see Richard Petty running in the fourth place. Petty is in fourth, Waltrip is in ninth. Here is Waltrip right behind him, Joe Milligan, another candidate for rookie of the year, right on his rear bumper. Leaders in the back straight away with Bobby Allison in command. Danny Parsons really putting the pressure on today, David Hart. Danny Parsons has done very well right through the weekend in practice and qualifying. He ran very strong, getting second place, and there he is giving Bobby Allison a really strong run for his money. Here again, ninth position. There you see Waltrip right behind him, Joe Milliken. Another outstanding rookie candidate who's fighting with Dale Earnhardt for rookie honors today for the season. 
coming into turn number three. Trouble right in front of Waltrip. He's out of control. Waltrip is spinning, sliding. John Resick is up against the wall. Darrell Waltrip in ninth position. His engine seat. No, it's starting. Waltrip is back on the way after sliding in turn number three. The caution is out. The leaders are up in turns one and two. There they are. Allison in front. Here's Darrell Waltrip coming around turn number four. And Allison in front. Here's Darrell Waltrip coming around turn number four. And let's see if he'll pit here. He's flat spot in the tires for sure. No, he's not going to pit this time. He doesn't want to because if he pulls into the pits, that'll put him at the back of the queue. So he's keeping going. There is Rezik getting back underway up in turn three. John Rezik who spun into the wall, and there are the leaders down the back straightaway approaching turn number three as Darrell Waltrip goes into turn number one. Yeah, this is almost bound to lead to a mass pit stop, I think, for tire changes and fuel. There they are coming through uh, the short shoot into turn four. Now we'll see. There's Rezik's car. We see only one car pitting, number 27 pulling down. Benny Parsons came on pit road, 15 and 28 stayed on the track. Here's Darrell Waltrip midway down the back straightaway. He's almost bound to come in. Replay, Waltrip, Milliken, nearly tagging him. Look how close Joe Milliken came to wiping out himself and Darrell Waltrip. Milliken and Waltrip did a good job there. Waltrip had to spin to avoid running up high into uh, Rezek, and Milliken just kept his head and went between the two of them. Sticky situation. And here comes number 88, Waltrip, now pitting. The actual seconds ticking off here, the time of the incident. The lead car is number 15, Bobby Allison. 28 is in second. Benny Parsons has pitted. He's come back on the track. Here's Richard Petty. He's come in and is going back out. You see Waltrip in there. Kaylee Arborough changing all four tires on his automobile. They'll change all four tires on this. Possibly change the driver's underwear. Cleaning up the front grill there to make sure it keeps running cool for this race. It's a very important race for Darrell Waltrip. Four tires, left side and right side rubber. Being changed after he took that long slide. He did well not to stall it in that slide. He was straight on the ball. He must have dipped the clutch instantly and kept the engine running when the car spun round. Waltrip coming back on the track. Darrell Waltrip coming on. And you see 15, he is now pitting. Bobby Allison with the Warner Hodgson car. Fine season he's had. Here's Baker's number 28. Those two that had been in the lead momentarily after the spin and crash up in turn number three in the pits and they're all taking on four tires and as we get ready to resume here pace car on the track and behind him car number 88 but we're being told david that 88 is on the end of the lead lap yes, see baker pulling out here's number 90 ricky rudd who's been battling back there with Waltrip and Milliken. He's back on the track. And there's some confusion here about Waltrip's position. He is in front of the field. There you see the pace car going to turn number one. Controversy for sure at this point. Waltrip is directly behind the pace car and then number 27. Remember, we saw 27 dive in quickly and come back on the track. So that, in effect, makes Darrell a lap down. As soon as 27 pulls by Waltrip, Darrell Waltrip will then be lapped by the leader. As things stand, Waltrip is in the lead lap, but just on the tail end of the lap, and right behind him is the leader, Benny Parsons. I'm not sure whether he should be there. It's very difficult to tell, but he did go straight into the pits after spinning. He did go around one more time, and I would have thought the pace cars should have, in fact, picked up 27. 27 picked up Parsons and sent Waltrip around. Yeah, to give him a chance to go around to the back of the field and be on the same pace lap at the back of the queue, but on the same lap. There's going to be some controversy for sure all winter long about this one. They are reporting Waltrip is on the tail end of the lead lap, and right behind him is Benny Parsons, and the pace car is coming in, and we're ready for resumption of the race. Here's Parsons out of turn number four as the pace car drops off. Waltrip trying to stay in that lead lap. 
And here's Benny. Pulling up. Will he go after him here? He's going down the inside, going into turn one. And Benny Parsons takes away a whole lap from Darrell Waltrip. And on this long two and a half mile circuit, Darrell's going to find that mighty uphill work to get it back. Made a stab at it there, but there was no place to go. Parsons really geared to fly here today, out in front in the Los Angeles Times 500. We'll be back with the conclusion of this race shortly. The CBS Sports Spectacular will continue after this word from your local station. It's every man's fantasy. A paradise of temptation that becomes a prison ruled by primitive women. The mysterious island of beautiful women, Saturday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Tonight on CBS. And welcome back to the Ontario Motor Speedway with Brock Gates and David Hobbs. I'm Ken Squire, and this is the situation. We may be in for the most dramatic finish in the Ontario Motor Speedway history. Seven cars in the lead lap, five cars running less than a second apart. There you see Darrell Waltrip. He's running a lap down in eighth position. But there's the story. Going into turn number one, Richard Petty side by side for the lead. Kaylee Arboro on the outside is losing it another time to Richard Petty. They dice all day back and forth among these five contenders in third spot is bobby allison running in fourth benny parsons and running fifth is buddy baker you can put a blanket over all of them and nobody could say that richard petty is not a racer look at this he's a lap ahead of his nearest contender with an almost surefire national championship and all he wants to do is win this race into turn number three petty is dropping to fourth place here he comes back on the outside another time for second does not get there. He loves that high oh. side. Look at him, right up there about the wall. Allison, out of control on the inside, almost losing it, gathers it back up. Turn four. Yarborough is first this time around. Richard Petty is second. Dead heat for third. Look at this, it is a three-way dead heat as Buddy Baker drops to the inside. Parading by at 190 miles an hour, three cards side by side for third position. Meanwhile, the leaders are in turn one. Kelly Arbor set a blistery pace in qualifying, and it looks like he's going to make a really strong dash to the finish here. Baker back to third on the outside, Parsons fourth, and Allison is in fifth. The last few moments trickling away in the L.A. Times 500. Yarborough just a little loose there in turn number two. Petty right on him. And how about this for rush hour traffic? Look at this battle. Here's Parsons back on the inside. It's Parsons going up into the third position. This will be one of Benny Parsons' strongest finishes yet. He's had a, not a very good season, not very bad. He's had one win, but this is, looks like he could even pull this one off. Simply remarkable competition. Cale Yarborough still has the lead. Richard Petty is in second. Can Yarborough stay there on the pole for this race? The Junior Johnson cars look strong all day. Still less than it's all about a second and two tenths now from first to fifth position. Back at turn number one, the pressure is really on, David. There's Dale Earnhardt, the Rookie of the Year. He'll get the Rookie of the Year on us if he can stay in that position now. He's running in seventh position, I think, at the moment. And there's Neil Bonnet, who took David Pearson's drive. And look at this race for the lead. On the back straightaway. Is that a close drop or is that a close drop? Bumper to bumper, for sure. Not one or two, but five automobiles slugging it out here in the last moments. Yarborough in front. Petty takes a high line and dropping to the inside is Benny Parsons another time. Parsons overhauling Richard Petty. They're all still able to run that pretty low groove, but old Richard just loves to go high around the outside all the time. Locked up in a battle for third. Petty with Allison directly behind him. Baker on the inside. Now Baker drops back. Conference in the Petty Pits. Brother Maurice talking with cousin Dale Inman there about the situation with Richard Petty. You see him in third, and you're watching Benny Parsons retake the lead. Dale Inman concerned about his cousin, Richard Petty, number 43, trying to win this race. He talked to us about his concern for this battle on this very important day. And it seemed like I can get more excited about a close ball game, a basketball game, or a football game than I do for the race because uh, when the race is real close, I know Richard's putting out all the effort and we've done all we can do for him. You can see him putting out that effort there, right up by the wall, squeezed up there by Bobby Allison, car number 15. All day 
long when you go by the petty pits. The only thing that Inman wants to know is how we think the Redskins are going to do today. One lap to go as they come down to the line. Richard Petty trying to win the national championship. Remember, if he should have trouble in Bobble here, it would make the car running back in the eighth position. Car number 88 of Darrell Walter for the national champion. Lap going to turn number two. There's your leader. It is Parsons in front. In second is Bobby Allison. Third is Kelly Yarborough. Fourth is Richard Petty. This is for all the marbles now. In the final lap, there you see the interval over the front five cars. And now here are you, over the front five cars. And now here are your two leaders. It is Benny Parsons in front. Bobby Allison in second going to turn three. And Benny definitely pulled out some space on that back chute. This looks like it could be his race as they go through three. Kale a congested turn four coming up the last corner of the race with five machines in contention to win it all here parsons in front allison in second yarborough is third there they are out of the last turn and headed for the checkered flag chip warren has it in hand who will it be at the line the twenty-five thousand dollars richard it's benny parsons allison second kale yarborough finishes in third in replay, low angle, see how quick and fast they came across that line. Finishing in fourth was car number 28, Buddy Baker, and Richard Petty wins the national championship by placing fifth here in the LA Times Charities 500. David Hobbs is moving down to talk with him and his very excited fans. Sam Power not work good. Sam, the bull was better. That, that was what he did. That's okay. Boy, it was a long day, wasn't it? I thought that was the longest race I ever drove. David Hobbs moving in to talk with Richard. Meanwhile, in the victory circle, the MC Anderson car number 97 prepared by David Ip. And a man who started out very poorly this year made a tremendous comeback at the end of the season. Benny Parsons has won this race. Rock Gates will be talking with him in just a moment. Let's go down now with David Hobbs and Richard Petty. Knowing you could have got into trouble trying to win the race, but you could have won the championship by staying out of trouble. Why did you try quite so hard to win the race? Well, I tell you what, racing's the name of the game, and uh, anytime I get in one, I want to win the dang thing. And you know, uh, it was one of them deals where I told them before we're gonna run as hard as we can. And if we get the brakes, we're gonna win the, the championship and uh, you know the race too. But we didn't win the race. Didn't get the right brakes for that. The other side of the coin, a disappointed Daryl talking to Ken Squire. Hard one. <laughs> yeah, it really was. About like we expected, you know. We didn't, uh, we never really thought that we'd have to beat Richard or he'd have to beat us. It'd be circumstances. Uh, the one thing I don't understand is on the, the car over there spun in front of me and I spun to miss him. And then I, I went around the racetrack. I came in the pit. All the other lead cars were in the pit. And uh, when I went out, the pace car let them all go by and pick me up as, uh, at that point in time, I thought the leader. And then later on, they said we was one lap down, and I, I never really understood that. Well, maybe 1980 will be better, Daryl. Well, we were closer this year than we were last year, and uh, hard to swallow, but uh, I knew coming out here that uh, I could lose. Let's go to Brock Yates with Benny Parsons. Just super, Benny. Oh. Got a little tense near the end, though. Oh, <laughs> me, oh, my. I don't know. Uh, I made a mistake coming off the second corner. The car got a little sideways. Bobby came up and tapped me. Uh, and But the problem that I had uh, got Bobby off the throttle and, as a matter of fact, gave us the win. Benny Parsons leads 25 cars to the finish line, seven of them running the lead lap, five of them seven-tenths of a second apart. And Dale Earnhardt wraps up Rookie of the Year honors in NASCAR Grand National Racing. So as things sugar off here at Ontario, California, Benny Parsons comes home the winner, and Richard Petty, the national champion. Your reaction, David Hobbs? Well, as he's 7-3 to three the field in national championships now, and about 2-1 to one in wins and money anyway, I suppose today was no great surprise. There was a bit of controversy halfway through with the pace car and Darrell Waltrip, but all in all, a very good NASCAR race, lots of money, more people, more everything than usual, and uh, we can only look forward to a great season 80. And now these giant transporters will begin to load up the plan for 1980, which is just around the corner and starts not too far from here at Riverside, California. And then it's on to the greatest race of them all, the Daytona 500, which you'll see live and complete here on CBS. For Brock Yates and David Hobbs, I'm Ken Squire.